ancient view that it has. Please bear with me. The year was 1819. The country was Austria. The village was Obendorf. And the setting was in the little village church. Hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm a church mouse. I have 17 brothers and sisters. I have my knapsack here. I'm looking for food here in the sanctuary. Oh, food has been so hard to find this year. We've had hard times before, but this year has really been awful. We've taken my mother the little leather squares that hold down the strings in the organ, and she boils them up into a kind of soup, but it tastes terrible. I want cheese. That's what I'm looking for. I haven't had cheese in so long, and it's so yummy. Surely there's some around here somewhere. Oh, shh. Here, here come the choir master and the pastor. Oh, the choir master looks upset. He's holding a bundle of strings. Uh oh. The choir master said to the pastor, Pastor, look! The mice have been in the organ again! Oh, well, we'll borrow Grim. She's the best mouser in the village. But, but you better get busy and fix it because we have a special service tonight. It's Christmas Eve. He said, I can't play the organ like this. It'd be like playing my guitar with one string. Oh, I forgot that you play the guitar. You can use that tonight. Oh, no. High church music is too formal to play on a guitar. Well, said the pastor, I'll tell you what. We'll write a new song. I'll write the words, and you can set them to music. Well, okay, but we don't have much time. I'll get right on it, said the pastor. And then, I smell cheese. I, I, I think it's coming from the pastor's coat pocket. I, I scamper up there, and I drop into the pocket, there's no cheese here. There was once, but now the only thing left is the smell. And then the pastor is outside. Oh, I'm not ready, but it's cold out here. I didn't bring a sweater or a coat or anything. Oh, brr. And But it isn't too long before I hear his boots scrape against the threshold. And we're inside his office. And he takes off his coat and he throws it over the chair. If I hadn't been hanging on to a thread in the pocket, I would have been thrown out for sure. Now, apparently, 200 years ago, I had opposable thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, they could talk. <laughs> anyway, I look out and the pastor sitting at his desk, but Gretel is on his lap. Well, I can't escape now. And the pastor is scribbling words on a page, and then he tear them off and crumple it up and throw it on the floor. And every once in a while, you look up at a picture on the wall of a young man and woman looking down at their baby lying on a bed of straw. And then he scribbles some words again and tear it out, crumple it up and throw it on the floor. But pretty soon, there, it looked like there's no paper balls all over the floor. And then there was a knock at the door. The pastor got up and walked over and opened the door, and there was a woman standing there. She had a long, gray, warm coat on, and high boots, and mittens, and a hat, and a scarf wrapped around her neck, and all you could see were her eyes. And she said, Pastor, do you remember Hans the woodcutter? Well, a young couple has moved into his cabin out there in the woods. The husband's going to work on the salt mines. And I just come from helping her deliver a beautiful baby boy. And they wondered if you could come out tonight and bless their baby. Oh, the pastor said, I've, I've got so much to do to get ready for tonight. I, I don't know if I can. She said, oh, that's all right. I'm sure they'll understand that you don't have time to go and bless the baby. Well, he said, you know, I've been working on a project here, but I'm not getting anywhere. Maybe a walk in the woods is just what I need. Oh, that's wonderful. She said, now I've got to get home and get ready for our celebration tomorrow. See you later at church, Pastor. And off she went. He picked up his coat and swung it around and, and put it on, and then we were outside again. Oh, it was for a longer time this time. Part of it was because he had to sit up and talk to everybody he met. Can you believe that? I look out, but there are lean, straight.
stray cats roaming everywhere. I can't get out now. And then he started off through the woods, and I thought this would be better. But it was snowing so hard, he could hardly see, and the wind was blowing. He kept falling down and tripping over tree roots, and then the snow would get in my pocket. I had never been so cold. And finally, finally I hear him knock on the door, and the husband opens it and invites us in. And his wife is wrapped in a blanket lying on the hearth in front of the fire. And the husband helps her to get up and they go and look at their baby. He's lying in a box and he's wrapped in a little white blanket. And the pastor said a Christmas crash. And he blesses the baby. And then the husband says, Pastor, do you want to stay and have supper with us? We don't have very much, but what we have, we certainly want to share with you. Oh, he said, I'm sorry, I can't. I've got so much to do to get ready for our service tonight, but I'll be out in a day or two, and we'll have a nice long visit. Well, said the husband, at least take this with you. And he went over to a table in the corner, and on it was a big wheel of cheese. <laughs> oh. And the husband cut off not one slice, but two. He gave them to the pastor, and he started nibbling on one, and he put the other one in. <laughs> oh, I started nibbling on that cheese. It was so good. I ate and ate and ate until I couldn't hold anymore. Then I broke up the rest of it and put it in my knapsack for my family. The pastor went outside, and the wind had died down, and the snow had stopped falling. And the pastor looked up at the sky, and he said, What a silent night. What a holy night. And then he started running, running back to the village. Well, my tummy was full and I felt all warm and sleepy. And I dozed off until he went crashing through his, the door of his study again and he threw their coat over the chair. I wish he stopped doing that. <laughs> but I looked out and he started scribbling, scribbling on his pad like mad. And then there was another knock at the door. It was the choir master. Where have you been? He said, in Bethlehem, said the pastor. Well, do you have anything for me? I do. He said, look at this. And the choir master went and sat down with his guitar and began courting it. Oh, I like this. He said, very nice, very nice. After a while, we went over to the sanctuary, and people started coming in for the service. And when all the confusion, I was able to get away. Oh, my family thought I had been eaten by Gretel for sure. But oh, the cheese, they were so thankful for the cheese. Everybody ate until they were full. And then we went over in the sanctuary and read it for the service. And we kind of stayed in the shadows. And the pastor announced, we're going to sing a new Christmas carol tonight. And the choir master began playing it. And you know what it was? Silent night. He said, I thought that this was, song is really going to be popular. In fact, it is the most popular Christmas carol ever written. It's sung in 65 countries and at least that many languages. And will you help me sing just the first verse of it? So. 